most people in life look at how do I make a life worth living and a time worth having. But here's the problem. America is a place where people like to play games. My sister has some neighbors who love to play games, and they actually have some clout with an airport that might allow them to play war games without people knowing it. What we know is that there are hackers that can hack a satellite. What we know is there are hackers who can hack our, well, STARS network. What we know is that there are hackers who hack your phones, hack your computers, and think it's a good old gay time. But what I can tell you is they're totally gay. And why they're gay is because, why not? They're having a happy time. Isn't that what gay means? That they're happy? But we also have gay people who think they have rights to other people's lives, who think they have the right to force people to be things they're not. We have women who think they have the right to force people to be something they're not. We have men who think they have the right to sexualize a person's body and destroy their rights. And openly, they might be law enforcement, or they might just be religious right, or they might be just fucking stupid about what God does in the night. But what I can tell you is that the gay men of America are usually the biggest liars across the land. And the lesbian women of America are the biggest dykes at hand. But if I say those things, does that make me a racist? Does that make me a white supremacist? Does that make me a hater of them? It doesn't. What it says to you is that maybe within this constituency of when those places get shot up, it might be one of them doing it to try to prove that people hate them when most, most people don't give a shit who you fuck and who you love. But when you play a game with a man's heart, when you screw a man's soul, when you test a man's brain, you lose your rights. When you play dangerous games of psychological abuse and inappropriate misuse of someone's body that is not yours, you put yourself in hell. You don't have to believe in the afterlife, but I promise you, you'll be ripped from your body by the reapers and screaming your way all the way through hell to the rest of your afterlife. So while you think you might be in the moral high ground, I highly recommend you learn Pendulum from me. Because in two seconds flat, if you submit your life to God the way you say you do in front of Jesus, that pendulum, that faith fob that I make, that one you take with your necklace that's an heirloom to your family, can tell you whether you're going to hell or not. And all you have to say is, My Lord Jesus, I submit my life to you. I'm grateful for the 316 passages of the Bible. But I need to know, am I going to heaven or hell? Please answer me today. If I'm going to heaven, say yes. If I'm going to hell, say no. But before that, you have to ask your Jesus, your Lord, your God, what is your yes and what is your no? And if there's a little bit of movement in your fob, it might be God trying to teach you something. You see, people who want to remind me of the stories that I've told on the radio, on audio casts, on video, are foolish. They always drop a word into their conversation, and that's called a tell. It's true that the FBI is looking for blacks, whites, Hispanics, and other people that can play the game with people to get information to harm people. At the same time, there are definitely those people that walk into shops as secret shoppers to check out you, to see how you take an extra dollar or two when someone has a huge load of dollar items or a huge load of other things. But what we know about people is that people are people, and every human being in America has a right not to be a slave. So when you started to play this game, did you decide you wanted to be a slave master or a slave? Because either way, you might think you're the slave master being in control of people, but in actuality, when you played a game with someone's body, with his life, with his record, you became the slave.